In January of this year, the Secretary of State himself, the Right Honourable David Davis, made the position of the United Kingdom abundantly clear in terms which cannot be misinterpreted. In his letter to the House of Lords European Union Committee, he said the following, HMG and GOG intend to pursue a close economic partnership underpinned by shared high standards of regulation. It is the unshakable objective of the United Kingdom government to ensure the seamless continuation of existing market access into the UK and enhance it where possible. Mr. Speaker, that is not a date-limited commitment. So I am able to confirm to this House, as I have already before, that the United Kingdom market will remain open to Gibraltar in financial services even after 2020. No one should be in any legitimate doubt about that. What we are seeking to do, and this goes to mechanism, not to principle, is to ensure that we create mutual confidence in and cooperation on regulatory and supervisory uh, structures for the period beyond 2020. But the statement last week is about 2020 insofar as it creates that immediate cushion to ensure that our potential illegal and nonsensical exclusion from the transitional period would have no effect as between Gibraltar and the United Kingdom. It does not operate as a limit in any way on the very clear and unequivocal open ended commitments given by Her Majesty's Government of the United Kingdom to maintain, that is to say, keep, and enhance, that is to say, improve, market access where possible. It is as a result of this that the United Kingdom Government will work closely with the Government of Gibraltar to design a replacement framework to endure beyond 2020 based on these shared high standards of regulation and enforcement of this regulation and underpinned by modern arrangements for information sharing, transparency and regulatory cooperation. Mr. Speaker, how will we do that? Well, we intend to carry out an outcomes review to ensure that regulatory outcomes in Gibraltar and the United Kingdom are aligned and designed to ensure consumer protection above all else. And the Gibraltar order made under the Financial Services and Markets Act will be recast and redesigned to ensure it is modernised and adapted into a bespoke piece of UK legislation that will create the gateway for access into the UK under the new bilateral arrangements. A Gibraltar team has already drafted this in Gibraltar and consideration of this is in train and part of the UK general legislation being prepared by Her Majesty's Treasury legal team. I can hear one of the devils just uh, next to me, Mr Speaker, already <laughs> working hard on the order. This is better than excellent progress at this stage in the game, Mr Speaker, when operators in other jurisdictions do not have any certainty or clarity of what access they may have into the UK market in services. This is particularly relevant in respect also of services in the online gaming industry. Mr. Speaker, Gibraltar is the only jurisdiction to have the benefit of a firm UK commitment on continued market access after we leave the European Union. Specifically, the UK has provided assurances that gambling operators based in Gibraltar will continue to access the UK market after we leave the EU in the same way as they do now. This is an important advantage for Gibraltar, as no other EU jurisdiction at all can boast such a clear and unequivocal statement of continued market access post-Brexit.